ది ఐడియల్ ఫాలోవర్ ఆఫ్ ట్రూత్ విభీషణ్ విభీషణ్ స్టడీడ్ ద వేదాస్ అండ్ శాస్త్రాస్ జస్ట్ లైక్ హిస్ బ్రదర్స్ రావణ్ అండ్ కుంభకర్ణ విభీషణ్ అటెండ్ బూన్స్ ఫ్రమ్ బ్రహ్మ ఆఫ్టర్ డెడికేటెడ్ పెనన్స్ రావణ్ అండ్ కుంభకర్ణ టూ హ్యాడ్ అప్టెయిన్ బూన్స్ ఫ్రమ్ బ్రహ్మ ఆఫ్టర్ సివియర్ పెనన్స్ అండ్ ఆస్టరిటీస్ బట్ ద టూ ఎల్డర్ బ్రదర్స్ had a cruel desire although vibhishan too was a rakshasa he was quite different in nature from his two brothers he wanted to use his boons for his own progress and enlightenment ravan and kumbhakarna wanted to use them for conquering the world depriving people and for their own lust when shurpankha came to ravan after her humiliation at the hands of ram and lakshman He was furious. He wanted to set out at once to kill Ram. But one of his ministers, Akampan said, "Maharaj, Ram is a very formidable warrior. It is not possible to defeat him in open combat. Lakshmana, his brother, is equally well versed in the use of arms. Hence, resist from attacking them. Use a different strategy." Shurpankha has just described the beauty of Ram's wife Sita. Kidnap her by any means. Ram cannot bear her separation and her loss would make him so dejected that he would end his life. Ravan liked Akampan's suggestion very much. Acting according to his crooked advice, Ravan kidnapped Sita with the help of Marich and imprisoned her in Lanka's Ashokvan. Vibhishan felt very angry and apprehensive. He felt Ravan's misdeeds might put Lanka and the Rakshasa community in danger. Ravan refused to listen to his advice, which was right and according to the principles of dharma. Meanwhile, Rakshasa spies were gathering information about Sri Ram. As Vibhishan learned of this, his mind was drawn towards Sri Ram. Vibhishan was basically a pious and a spiritual Vishnu bhakt. When he had a meeting with Hanuman, he had a little peace of mind. Vibhishan was present in the Rajya Sabha when Hanuman was made captive by Indrajit and brought before Ravan. Hanuman was straight and blunt in conveying what he had come to say. Ravan became furious when he heard Hanuman's words. He wanted to put Hanuman to death immediately. but vibhishan intervened and said lord of lanka hanuman is ram's ambassador and no ambassador should be killed it is against raj dharma and is condemned universally a certain code of conduct is expected of an ambassador if he deviates from that then physical punishment is permitted like chopping off limbs torturing or whipping but certainly not death penalty Ravan said in that case set fire to his tail because vanars are very proud of this part of their body but after his tail was set on fire hanuman played havoc and reduced much of lanka to ashes ravan called an emergency meeting of his raj sabha when he came to know that ram was marching with his vanar army towards lanka he told them of the events taking place Hanuman came alone and set Lanka on fire killing many of our rakshasas now Ram is coming with his entire army of vanars to fight a war you are all aware of this situation ponder over it and counsel me as to what should be done now Ravan's advisor said oh mighty and unconquerable lord of the three worlds why do you worry about this ram who is he after all Everyone fears you and your valor. You have vanquished Indra, Kubel, and Yama. What are Ram, Lakshman, Sugriva and their vanars compared to your power? Please do not lose sleep over Ram's coming year. Vibhishan found this unbearable. He said to Ravan with folded hands, "Brother, it will not be proper to underestimate Sri Ram and Kishkindha's army of vanars." the best recourse it seems to me 
is to return Sita to Sri Ram. Ram is a follower of Dharma, the righteous path. He is completely well versed in all weapons, unconquerable in war. Lord, I earnestly request you to adopt the path of righteousness and return Sita to Ram immediately. Ravan said, I am not afraid of anything at all. Even if all the gods come to Ram's aid, I shall crush him in no time. Indrajit, Ravan's son, came ahead and said, In this entire assembly there is only one coward and that is you, Vibhishan. Indrajit, you have no manners. You do not know how to talk with your elders. You are still immature, not at all competent to give advice, Vibhishan said. Ravan became very angry to hear Vibhishan criticizing his son. He said, If someone else had talked like this, I would have killed him. Shame on you, Vibhishan. You are jealous of my prosperity, progress and prowess. Vibhishan then realized that it was dangerous to live in Lanka any longer. So accompanied by four of his trusted companions, he left Lanka flying through the skies to seek refuge at Sri Ram's feet. Vibhishan reached the spot where the construction of the bridge to Lanka was in progress. He addressed Sugriv who was present at the time saying, I am Vibhishan, the younger brother of Ravan, king of Lanka. Ravan has insulted and driven me out of Lanka because I asked him to follow dharma and righteousness and return Sita to Sri Ram. I have left behind my kingdom, wife and children and have come to seek Sri Ram's refuge. Sugriv was against Vibhishan being given refuge. However, Sri Ram asked the wise Hanuman's opinion and advice. Hanuman said, I shall honestly say what I feel. I do not suspect Vibhishan at all. He carries no ill will and he should be welcomed without suspicion. Sri Ram accepted Hanuman's opinion and not only gave refuge to Vibhishan but also declared him the future king of Lanka. Vibhishan certainly proved very helpful giving precious advice and guidance in critical situation. This paved the way for Ram's victory. Ravan was slain by Sri Ram. Lesson to ponder One has to sometimes make difficult decisions in one's life. On one side, you have your blood relatives with all their selfishness and on the other side are values that you hold dear. The first can give you temporary happiness, while the second has troubles and sorrow awaiting you. But the more difficult path also leads to greater and lasting happiness in the future. Your self-esteem will also increase along with your reputation. If we adopt the first path, then our so-called near and dear ones are happy. The decision to follow the other path creates heartburn for them and they are usually displeased. Vibhishan was in this very situation. He sided with dharma and righteousness, sacrificing all worldly pleasures. Sometimes in life, we find ourselves at crossroads. We have to make a choice, truth or falsehood, proper or improper, righteous or otherwise. In such a case, always remember Vibhishan. Wherever there is truth, there is God. And wherever there is God, there is certainly victory.